Hey everyone, uh, N2COA Randy here. Um, <clears throat> playing with attenuators again. After watching Al's incredible video on building an ARF attenuator, I put this one together. This is like the tiniest thing in the whole freaking world. Um, I cussed at it several times, <laughs> soldering the parts on it. <clears throat> wanted to show the connectors. What did I do with those? They are here somewhere. That I can assure you. So these are the connectors. Oops. Um, trying to focus that. And the nice thing about these that I like a lot, they are, um, there we go. They're PCB connectors, so if you can note, oops, actually I hit a button there. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm going to try to point. But across the uh, top here, it's flat from the center pin to here to here. It's basically a straight line. So I was able to lay a component SMD across this and one of the SMD resistors across this side. Um, in my case, it was 120 ohms each. And um, did that on both sides and then slid it onto a circuit board. Alright, so here's the circuit board that uh, is completed, pretty much. And so this is what I was talking about, that you've got um, the two resistors, one here and one here, from the center pin to the ground. And then I put the two in series, because it's a pi type attenuator. And then two on this connector from the center pin to ground and center pin to ground. So I flipped this over. Now I played around with this, so bear with me, but the pin, the uh, ground lugs on the back, <clears throat> you know, just solder right to the PCB on the bottom. Um, I ground off the board in the middle. I was curious if it made a difference or not. It did not really seem to make much of a difference, but I was just playing with that. But anyway, this is the way they're attached to the bottom of the board. Just solder them on. And you've already seen the top of the board. That thing is extremely small. It's very, very tiny. But uh, that's it in a nutshell as far as the actual uh, construction build of uh, the attenuator. Alright, so now we're looking at the um, Regal DSA815 spectrum analyzer. And what we're going to do is put a barrel connector, um, like so, in line with the cables that I have on here. Our cables. Um, and normalize the sweep with that particular setup and then replace the barrel connector with the RF attenuator. Unfortunately these Chinese cables give me a little grief sometimes. But that is the way it is. Alrighty. So get that connected. I believe. We'll turn on the tracking generator. And we'll go down to normalize. Let's move the reference down a little bit, just makes it easier to work with. 70%. And hit normalize. There we go. And we'll take the barrel connector out. Or I think Hell <laughs> called it a bullet. So we'll take the bullet out. I don't know, you know, maybe you might get arrested saying stuff like that anymore. Imagine being in a college and calling it a bullet, they probably suspend you. Alright, there you go. And that's kind of the trace. <coughs> um, probably could normalize that. It might look a little better. Or, uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, do a video averaging on it or something. Just clean it up a little bit. Like so. I'm not sure. As you can tell, I mean, it's even looking at it like this, it's, I don't think it's as flat as L's was because it's got these little, like, bumps in here. But um, those are not really all that much. I've measured them. Um, anyway, but it's still reasonably flat <laughs> all the way across for the most part. But let me turn on a peak um, and see, search parameters. Well, let's not do a threshold yet. Let's go back to peak and uh, go down one, turn on the peak table. Check it, do it on amplitude, turn it on, 
and then go back to Peak to search for Aerodera's excursion and lower this down Oops. see part of the problem is the actual quote peaks that are there are so small that it really is hard to see it to discern them with the scope let me hit system really quick here and turn the uh, data line off it does that automatically it's uh, somewhat annoying actually and <coughs> excuse me go back to peak uh, search parameters and let's just change this to like point five db there we go Need a little more there so what you're seeing there careful this is a pointed object right <laughs> um it, i'm gonna turn on a marker actually as well and let me just um, bring that over here because this is really more it's a lot flatter over here so so it's like minus 20 db 20 0.1 dB somewhere in there 20.2 okay so that's kind of my reference point here because this is where it's you know reasonably flat 2020 175 megahertz <coughs> okay so at that point so it's minus 20.20 20, and then we've got minus 19 point on these different spots along the way here and it is only the peaks I haven't figured out how to make it do the valleys on these things I'm not sure if you how or if you can but I'll figure it out eventually anyway so these are running anywhere from minus 19.5 to minus 19.80 so I mean even at 19.5 that's um, like 0.7 dB um, at worst case and that's positive so if the valleys are like a half or something anyway when I measured it before it was coming out somewhere around um, plus or minus a half, plus or minus 0.6 dB, something along those lines, all the way across up to 1.5 gig. The thing I don't know, and I will uh, do another test with, <coughs> is I want to make another one, and with that center resistor, where I had two in series, I believe I'm going to try with just one in there, um, and make that and see how it comes out. And then also, I know originally when Al W2AEW did his, he did two resistors in parallel. Um, and his came out pretty flat, but somebody made a comment about that, and so I was going on their comment and doing the two in series to see what happened. Either way, I mean, that's still <laughs> pretty flat um, for all intents and purposes, um, all the way up to one and a half gig. That's as far as this, this, uh, the range of this particular spectrum analyzer goes. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, post them. And appreciate you watching the video. Again, check out Al's page because he does have a really good video on RF attenuators and it goes through the design and what um, formulas you use and he goes through the math and he does uh, such excellent videos. So, thanks everyone for watching and uh, y'all have a nice day and do see you away. Going that away.